Welcome folks, Jason Hoppy here to walk you through another Illustrator tutorial. This tutorial I want to talk about clipping masks and draw inside mode. Now clipping masks and draw inside are really the same thing, but a lot of people refer to clipping masks because that's how we used to do it many years ago with Illustrator, but not everybody knows about this draw inside mode. And I want to talk about what clipping masks and what draw inside do and how they're similar and the unique features that make draw inside different. And in my opinion, that much better to use than a clipping mask. So let's start with a clipping mask. And a clipping mask is Illustrator's way of taking something and being able to kind of make it look like it's inside another shape. An Illustrator doesn't have like InDesign has where you can just create a container and then just paste something into another container. Illustrator won't let you do that. It's very basic in the way it handles its shapes. So what we have to do is we have to make it appear as if this shape is actually clipping like using as a mask to mask out the other shapes. Now just like you would go in and if you're going to frame some artwork, you'd buy a frame. And then, of course, you've got your glass in that's inside the frame and your artwork would go in behind the frame. So your frame would always be in front and your artwork would go behind. So I've got this circle here. It's orange with a blue stroke on it. And this is going to be my picture frame. And I want to take my artwork here, the star and the square, and I want to then frame it inside my circular picture frame. So how this works is very simple. I'm going to park my artwork where I'd like it to be, and then I'm gonna put my frame on top, and your frame has to be in front. So I'm gonna go under Object, Arrange, Bring to Front, which is gonna be Shift-Command or Shift-Control right bracket. Now, with my frame in front, I can then select all of my artwork and my frame together with my selection tool. Frame has to be in front in order for this to work. Okay, because you're mounting the picture, basically your artwork from behind. Now, I didn't group the rectangle or the square and the star here, and I'm going to show you one of the reasons why I do and I don't. Okay, sometimes it's nice not to have your artwork grouped. Other times it's really helpful to have it grouped. I'm going to show you both ways. So with my artwork in back and my frame in front, I'm going to select all my content here. Object. I'm going to go down to Clipping Mask and choose Make. And when I make a clipping mask, you will see that my artwork will now be clipped inside that circle. However, what happens when you do a clipping mask is whatever fill or stroke or any other attributes that you have on your front frame, basically, I spent the time to make my frame look really good, you lose all those attributes. And that's a problem. Because so many times it's like, well, how do I go back in here and be able to then get my fill and stroke back? Well, if I simply select my now framed artwork, which we call a clipping mask, if I were to go in and select this entire, what we call a clipped group, and the reason why I call it a clipped group, because in my layers panel here, I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna open up this layer here and you can see that this is a clipping group, a group of things that have been clipped together. I'm gonna to open that twirly here and the way we read a clipping group is that the topmost object here, which is my circle or the ellipse, is my frame. And then you can see what's inside that frame or that um, clipped group. The frame is always on top and the frame is always underlined, which means this is my frame that's framing everything else inside here. And we're gonna come back to this layers panel here in a second. If I were to select my entire clip group and I decide that I would like to apply a color to this, thinking that I'm going to apply that color back again to my entire frame. I do that and it adds orange to the entire frame. And it's like, okay, well, that's kind of weird. But look what it did in the layers panel. It added orange to the frame and all of my artwork in the frame here. So I'm gonna undo that. And it's like, no, that's not what I want. What happens if I go in and put some stroke around it here? I do and everything gets a stroke. It's like, okay, wait, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to isolate the frame from the objects inside. And you can, okay? So a couple different ways to do it. Um, one way of doing it is paying attention to your control bar. Now, if you don't have your control bar up, this is something that Illustrator still has the control bar, but newer versions don't have it up when you open up Illustrator. So go under your um, view menu, sorry, under your window menu, 
and there's your control. As I tell people, you do not want to lose control. So with this control bar, I have the ability to see what's going on inside my clipping group. And up here with my content selected, I can see I'm in a clipping group. This first button right here says edit the clipping path. This other one says edit the contents. But here's the trick. The edit clipping path is selected by default, which means I would think that I could be able to go in and apply a stroke or a fill to my frame without applying it to the artwork. Well, yes and no. Here's the way you actually get to editing just your clipping path. What you have to do is you have to go back over and click on edit the contents button. And now you'll see my content or my objects that are in there are now editable. Then I have to go back to the edit clipping path again, and now this has isolated it from everything else. I know, it's weird. So you go in, edit your contents, go back to edit your clipping path. You can now see that my frame is isolated, and now I can move that frame around, and you can see that artwork frame is going in and being able to be moved around here, and my artwork is staying in the same position. If I now go in and I apply a color to that, my artwork looks like it's in front of the frame, but it's still inside the frame. And it's like, okay, I put my frame in front, my artwork was behind, but when I create a clipping mask, I can now add color to the frame. And I can also add a stroke to that frame too. But funny enough, the stroke appears in front, but the fill appears behind. And it's like, okay, that's just all kind of weird and crazy. Yeah, it is, okay? It's different. It's not something that we're used to seeing. So that's how it works. Now, if I click off this whole thing and select it again, now my entire artwork is selected. So I'd have to go back into the clipping group here, edit the contents, and then come back and edit the path in order to isolate it, okay? And so that's one way of doing it. I actually like using the layers panel. I like to select my entire content here. And here's the crazy thing. When you go to try to select it, do you see I'm clicking on the my basically my frame and my orange and nothing selecting here. For some reason, Illustrator doesn't understand unless you go right to the very edge or select your artwork that even though this is a filled shape, it doesn't get that you're trying to click on it. I know, something different. So here if I'd like to go in and I would like to edit just the contents or just one piece of the artwork of the contents, using the layers panel, is gonna be a whole lot easier to understand. Now, I love using the control bar to get into my content and get into my path here, but I'm also very well versed with this. So let's walk this through a little bit easier in the layers panel to understand what's going on. When I select the entire content here, you'll notice that my clipping group, ellipse, path, and rectangle are all selected. And the reason why I know that is because each one has this little colored box, which I call a little crouton next to it, okay? If I would like to isolate just the frame here, away from everything else, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna click on that target. And you'll notice that now only my artwork, only my frame is selected here, okay? So nothing else. I can change the fill and the stroke of my artwork. I can change the shape of this without manipulating the content in between or inside, technically. If I wanna just act activate the star here, I'm gonna to go to the star here, I'm gonna click on that and then click on that target and activate that and target that. And now I can rotate the star, I can scale it, I can change it, I can add a fill to that, I can add a stroke to that as well. Anything that I'd like to do independent of everything else. Same with the rectangle, activate that, target the corner widgets, fill that with a different color, add a stroke to that as well if I'd like, and so on and so forth by using the layers panel. Okay, don't underestimate the layers panel. It's awesome. And it really makes a lot of sense. Now, here's the one tricky thing with a clipping mask, trying to get something back inside once you have actually gone in and done the object clipping mask make, okay? Now, if I wanted to put something else in here, I would have to go under object, clipping mask, release, take it all apart, put other things in there, and then go ahead, select it all, and make the clipping mask, but I would lose all my content of my fill and my stroke of my mask. Don't wanna do that. So here's the trick of putting something into an existing clipping mask that's already made. Draw whatever shape that you want to go into your clipping mask. There it is. So I'm going to fill that with a fill. I'm going to give it a different stroke color right there. 
Now I'd like to put this into my clipping mask. Well, there is no object clipping mask make because it's not attached to this. But take a look at the layers panel here. This ellipse that I have selected, you can see it's selected here. It's active and the little target button is there. The double rings mean it's active. What I want to do now is I'm going to take this newly drawn piece and I'm going to put it into my clipping group. And it's just is that simple. I don't try to drag it into the group here because all I'm doing is just moving it around the artboard here. I'm not actually putting it into the group. I need to actually get it into the group here by dragging this content and putting it into the group. And into the group means it's got to be anywhere below my clipping mask. Now all of a sudden it's like, okay, it disappeared. Right, because guess what? This is a window. And you drew this shape, I drew this shape, outside the window. If you want it to show up, you have to have that shape inside the window, okay? Now, I can have this that's in front of my star, sure, because it's on top in the layers panel. I can drag that down so it's now behind the star. If I want to take it back out of the clipping mask, I have to then drag it back out of that clipping group onto its own layer, and it's totally free. But when I drag this in here, I need to put this in. And in order to make this work, I want to make sure that it's below my clipping mask here so I understand the layer order inside my mask. Okay? So, a lot of cool, crazy stuff. I know people are just like, no way, I've been struggling this for so many years. Absolutely. Okay? So this is the clipping mask make method. You put your frame in front, you put your content behind, you select everything, object clipping mask make, but you lose the fill and the stroke. Very easy to go back and do that in your layers panel or if you understand the edit content and then edit frame here up in the control bar. Either way, you know what? Layers panel makes it a whole lot more easier because we are visual people. You can see what's doing the clipping and where the content is. Now, I want to show you this next method, which is called the draw inside method. Now, I use clipping masks all the time, but draw inside is a different way to do a clipping mask with one distinct advantage. I have a t-shirt here. I'd like to put some stripes on. So I've created my stripes and I would like to duplicate this. So I'm going to option or alt click and drag and then do my command or control D to duplicate all my content. Okay. Now, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to put this all inside the t-shirt here. So I've created enough stripes to make the t-shirt look good. I'm gonna select all the stripes here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group these together. Why? Because when I've got lots of content in there, I don't wanna go picking piece by piece. I wanna group it all together. So I'm gonna do my Command G, Object, Group, Command or Control G. And my Layers panel puts it into a group here, all right? Now, here's the crazy part. What I'm gonna do with this entire group here is I'm gonna go under the Object menu, I'm going to go under edit here and I'm going to choose cut. Okay, I'm going to cut it. It's like doing a copy, but it disappears. I'm going to cut it. Now I'm going to select my path here. I'm going to go to the bottom of my uh, toolbar and I've got three different sections here. Draw normal, draw behind, and draw inside. When I take my object and I choose the draw inside mode, this allows me to draw inside or paste inside. This does not let me drag inside. This is either a draw inside or a paste inside. So now that I get my draw inside mode on my t-shirt, the object that I'd like to put the content in, you'll notice you get these little dotted lines, these little things. Well, it's kind of like a coupon, right? And what do you do with a coupon? You clip it. <gasps> Clipping mask. I know, that's a different way to get to it, okay? So I've got my t-shirt. I have drawn my stripes. I cut my stripes out. I've selected my t-shirt, went into draw inside mode, and now I'm going to choose paste. And basically what I've done is I've pasted inside, okay? And now you can see that I've got my group of items here, and this is why I grouped them all together so I don't have to move everything separately. And I can rotate and I can scale that entire group inside here and I can get my content inside there. When I'm done, I go back to my toolbar, click on the draw normal mode, click off it, there's my content. Can I still access everything the same way that I access my clipping mask? Yes, because it's the same thing, okay? It is also a clipping group, just like it shows here. I open it up and I can see that my t-shirt is my clipping path. Why did I group all those lines together? 
because it makes it a whole lot easier to target them at once instead of each and every individual path. Now remember, this is a layers panel, so you can always go in and you can always target each and every one of these rectangles separately if you need to, but the group just makes it that much easier to target. If I want to change the colors here, maybe make it a little bit lighter, a little bit darker, they're all grouped together, makes it super easy to edit. I click off it, I click back on my shirt right there, there's my clipping mask. Now, once you've gone through your draw inside mode, you'll notice that we've already drawn inside and the draw inside button is no longer available. What happens if I want to put something inside this? Simple. I go and I draw something if I'd like to put like a pocket in here. And in order to do this, I can't use the draw inside method again because I'm trying to draw inside my shirt and the draw inside is no longer done. Can't do it, can't touch it because we did it once. So again, I've got my rectangle here. Here's my clipping group. I'm gonna drag that rectangle into the clipping group right there. I can't see it because it's outside my window. I, you know, my window is my t-shirt and I need to make sure and I can then drop my little pocket right inside there and get that pocket inside. If I need to activate that pocket to change the color or to round the corners or do something, I can go back to my layers panel, click on that target, get a hold of it right there. Okay, now that's the cool part of this. Now the difference between draw inside and clip and doing a clipping mask here, the draw inside allows you to keep your artwork in your frame. Do you notice when I put my content in here, I didn't lose the color of the shirt or the border, but had I done my clipping mask by putting the shirt in front, the artwork behind, and then use my object clipping mask make, I would have lost all of the attributes of the shirt. Then I'd have to go back in get the shirt and reapply the attribute. So I love that. So I just wanna show you the draw inside method again, really quickly. So if I take a shape and then I click on the draw inside method here, the draw inside method allows me to go in and draw inside. So what happens if I'd like to, you know, make kind of like this circle be slightly darker? Well, I've got my draw inside mode. I'm gonna pick a darker color and I'm gonna draw another circle because I can draw inside, all right? And you'll see whatever I draw inside allows me to literally draw inside and I can draw anything that I want to. I can come back with lines, I can come back with a star as well and I can change the color of that star and everything that I do is drawn inside. And I can keep drawing while my draw inside is still active. But once I click off this, my draw inside is no longer active and I will not be able to get back in there and draw inside again. Everything else would then have to be in the layers panel. But this is how I do a nice slip shadow on something. I go in and if I'd like to do a nice little slip shadow here, I use my draw on side, I create my little slip shadow here, and then once I'm done, I go back to the draw normal mode, get back to the content here. I'm gonna go back into my clipping group and my layers panel, be able to access by targeting any one of those items there, to be able to change the attributes, the size, or get rid of them, absolutely. What the draw inside cannot do is that you cannot drag inside. So if I have a shape here and I have this shape, nope, wrong one, that was the flare tool, there we go, I have my shape. And if I use the draw inside method, I can't go in here and I can't have something out over here, okay, and try to drag this content in. I can't do that, okay, this is draw inside or paste inside, it is not drag inside. If I'd like this, I would need to copy this and then paste it inside of here, and then I can get that in there if I want to. But I can't just simply drag when this is in my draw inside mode. Once you do the draw inside mode, you're done. Once you exit that, you can't get back to it, okay? How do you get back to the draw inside mode? Well, you go back under your object menu, clipping mask, and you're going to release the clipping mask. Once you release the clipping mask, that draw inside will work again. Pretty sweet. One last thing about pasting inside or drawing inside multiple objects. Putting something in text. I'd like to take this kind of quick little um, brush tool that I had done with this kind of graffiti look, and I want to put it inside my text. The problem is, is that when I go and I put it inside my text, and by the way, I outlined this text, took my text, and I went under type menu, and I chose create outlines right there. It's grayed out because I've already created an outlines. If I select all my text, you'll notice that the draw inside method is not available. And the reason why is because these are multiple shapes. Draw inside only works on one shape. So you think, oh, I'm going to group these together. 
absolutely not, doesn't work. Grouping them together is just taking four shapes and putting them into a group. It's still four shapes. Here, I'll show you. I've just grouped them all together, okay? Still won't let me do the draw inside mode. So in order to make this draw inside available, what you have to do is you have to turn this into one shape. And to turn this into one shape, we're going to go into the object menu and choose compound path. A compound path is multiple paths, multiple shapes together. They may not have to be touching, but if I want to turn this into one shape, I take all of my separate shapes here, object, compound, path, make. And I turn this into a compound path. How do I know that? Because when I go in here and I look at this right here, and let me ungroup the whole thing right there so we can see, a compound path is simply that. There is no twirly to open up to get to each and every one of these letters. It's a singular shape. Now, if I take all of my uh, brush marks that I did, I'm gonna group those together, and I'm going to go under Edit Cut, and whoops, forgot to get that one. I'm gonna now select my compound path here, all those paths put together. It wasn't grouped together. It was turned into a compound. Now I'm going to use the draw on side mode, which is now available. Now I'm gonna paste this in and I can scale this and I can rotate this and I can put this all together to get that text to look exactly the way that I want to, okay? Once I click on the draw normal mode right there, I cannot get back into this using the draw on side mode, but I can go into my layers panel and I can get a hold of either my clipping mask my frame that I use to frame the whole thing. And then my group of items here, there's my entire group, and I can drill down inside the group in order to get each and every one of these, and I could target each one of these. If I would like to access each one of these separately, scale it, change the color, do something with this outside the realm of what I'm used to. But I can still have access to each and every one of these things without taking the whole thing apart, without releasing all of the content inside there. And that, folks, is the way we do draw inside and clipping masks. And I know it's been super helpful and all these cool little tricks that you've learned. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and you're going to see tons more of this because they are awesome.